Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, Pastor Caleb. Happy Friday and welcome to chapel. Today, uh, I wanted to start off our chapel with a little flag quiz. That's why we're uh, in my office today. So I want to see how well you know some of the flags of the world. We'll start with the ones right behind me here in my office. All right. If you know this flag, you can shout it out. What country is this? That is the flag of Mexico. Good job if you figured that one out. What about right behind me? This is the flag of Colombia, right? And if you were looking closely, you actually see Colombia's right on there. What about this one over here? What country is that? That's right. That country is the that's that's the flag of Captain America. No, I'm just joking. This flag, of course, is Argentina. Yeah, maybe some of you know. Maybe some of your families uh, are from some of those countries too. Let me put up a few more to really challenge your brain power this morning to see if you, if you know some of these. All right, does anybody know what flag this is? That is Germany. All right, next one. Does anybody know what country this is from? This one might be a little bit easier. This is Spain. Good. All right, time for the challenge round. Here's going to be kind of a, a difficult one. All right, what country is this? That's, that's Australia. Yeah, I, maybe some of you knew that. All right, this one. Ah, uh, yes, that is Japan. And last one here, la or last two. Oh, we'll give you two more. Does anybody know which one this is? That is South Africa. And, okay, here's, here's the last one. Big challenge. 10 million bonus points to anyone who can get this one. You know what? I'll even give the 10 million bonus points to teachers if they know this one. This is Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, that's the flag of Kyrgyzstan. So, Pastor Caleb, why, why are we looking at some flags today? Well, today we're going to take a look at a story from the Bible that shows us this simple truth. God wants all people to be saved. People in Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, the United States, Kyrgyzstan, Australia, Germany, Spain. God wants all people to be saved. God loves this whole world. God sent Jesus to die to take away the sins of the world, which means not just people here in Miami, not just people in the United States, but people all over the world. So today's story, we're going to take a look at how God worked powerfully so that all people could be saved and so that all people could come to hear about it and to believe in it. So I'm excited to share that story with you today from the Bible. Before we jump in and sing our first song, though, let's begin in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go sing our first song. Let's sing, My God is So Great. And so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so great. So mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing 
nothing my God cannot do for you. All right, boys and girls, uh, let's learn from God's Word this morning. At the start of chapel, we, we talked about some different countries' flags, right? That people live all over the world and that God wants all people to be saved, right? I mean, God sent Jesus to be a Savior not of just people in the United States. He sent Jesus to be a Savior of people all around the world. And not only does God want all people to be saved, He wants all people to know about it. And that's what our story is about today. There were people, in today's story, there were people from all around the world gathered together in one city, in Jerusalem. They were all there to celebrate a festival or a big, big party. It was kind of like their Thanksgiving. So there were people from all over the place. Here's, here's what it says in Acts chapter 2. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And here it mentions some of the places that they were from. Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, Cretans and Arabs, people from all over the place. You probably don't even know where most of those places are, and I don't even know where all of those places are. They were from all over the place, and they all came to Jerusalem to f- celebrate this one festival. It just so happened that people from all over the world were in Jerusalem, and God's going to do something amazing with that. Not only were there people from all over the world in Jerusalem, though, there was another group of people that was there. Jesus' disciples. Can you kind of remember what Jesus' disciples had been through? This is, uh, the disciples had experienced Jesus dying on the cross, which made them terribly sad and afraid. But then Jesus rose from the dead, which made them happy and joyful and excited. And they got to actually see Jesus face to face and talk to him. And then eventually Jesus ascended into heaven. We talked about that last week. Jesus ascended into heaven. He said, I'm I'm not going to be here on the earth with you physically in a body like this anymore. But I want you to be my witnesses and share the good news with people while I'm gone until I come back. And in fact, when Jesus left, he said to his disciples, uh, while I'm gone, I'm going to send you a surprise. I'm going to send you a special helper. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Jesus' disciples were also in Jerusalem. So people from all over the world were there. Also Jesus' disciples. And they were there in Jerusalem waiting for Jesus to send some sort of special gift or some sort of special helper. So there's, they're there waiting for something that Jesus is going gonna, is gonna to send them. So all the disciples, not just the 12 disciples, but other believers in Jesus, they were all gathered together in one room. And then something amazing happened. First, there was the sound of a blowing of a violent wind. Like hurricane force winds is what it sounded like. This huge rushing air wind noise. In addition to that, above the disciples' heads, there, there appeared little flames. And that was amazing. But what was even more amazing than the, both of those things is there were people walking by. Remember people from all over the world, right? Walking by and they heard something, not just the rushing of a wind, but they also heard a lot of voices. And as everybody heard this, a big crowd gathered and they, they heard the voices of the disciples. And some people were like, uh, that sounds crazy. That doesn't sound like any language that I know. It sounds like they're babbling. It sounds like they're speaking made up words. But then some other people came by, remember, people from all over the world, and they came by and they said, wait, what? wait a minute. No, 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 that, that's, not, that's not crazy talk. Maybe a guy from Phrygia said, that's not crazy talk, that's Phrygian. Maybe a person uh, who spoke Arabic said, no, that's not, that's not crazy talk. That's, he's speaking my language. He's speaking Arabic. Maybe a person from Cappadocia said, you don't recognize that, but that's, oh, that's Cappadocian. And he's talking about, he's saying something about Jesus. And so there was this huge commotion, this big crowd gathered because they had heard the wind, they were seeing these tongues of flame above their heads, and they were hearing the disciples speak in tons of different languages and a bunch of people hearing them speak in their own language. It's amazing. People were so confused, like, what's going on? So Peter stands up. One of Jesus' disciples, Peter, stands up and he's like, okay, everybody, listen. I know everyone's confused. There's lots of stuff going on. Let me explain a couple things to you. First of all, the stuff that you're hearing right now, they're not crazy. Okay, 
They're, they're not crazy. They're, they're actually speaking in real languages. In fact, the, this isn't just like, it wasn't like we just sent them off to language school. This is the Holy Spirit. And he says, God promised he was going to send his Holy Spirit. He quotes a, a prophet named Joel who talked about this. And he said that God was going to pour out his Holy Spirit on people. And he says, that's what's happening right now. They're doing this by the power of God, the Holy Spirit. They have the ability to speak in these different languages. And he says, do you know what they're talking about in these different languages? Do you know what our message is today? He says to them, you, you maybe heard about Jesus. You see all the people who had gathered from these different countries and, and come to Jerusalem. They, uh, they believed in God. right? They were believers and they were looking forward to God's promised Savior. But they didn't know yet that that Savior was Jesus. And so Peter says, you heard about this guy, Jesus. Remember, you heard they maybe had done miracles, but then that he was put to death and he was crucified. Well, that Jesus, that's God's promised Savior. In fact, he didn't stay dead. God rose him, raised him from the dead. He is alive. We saw him with our own eyes. We can tell you it's the truth. And he is God's promised Messiah. In fact, here is how Peter uh, finishes out his little sermon, his little devotion that he gives to them. He says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. So he's saying, this Jesus, you probably heard about him. He's your Savior. And the people were shocked by this. They didn't know that. You've probably heard that a bunch of times here at school, but they didn't know that Jesus was their Savior. That was amazing news to them. And here's how they respond. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. People ask, what What should we do this with this brand new information that Jesus is the Savior? Peter says, repent. Say sorry to God for your sins and be baptized. Have your sins washed away. Trust in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And what happens when he tells them about that? What happens not only when he says that, but also there's all these other disciples speaking all these different languages, telling people about Jesus in all their unique different languages? Here is the result of what happens that day. This is amazing. Those who accepted this message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. There were 3,000 people that came to believe in Jesus that day. What an amazing miracle. And it wasn't because the disciples were just so amazing and talented. It was because God, the Holy Spirit, was working in people's hearts. You see, God, the Holy Spirit, didn't just allow them to speak different languages, but this is something really important that you need to know about the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit helps faith to grow. So you have faith in Jesus, right? You believe in Jesus as your Savior. You love him. And every time that you hear God's word, every time you hear about Jesus, the Holy Spirit is working in your heart to grow your faith. And every time that somebody hears about Jesus as their Savior, maybe for the first time, the Holy Spirit is the one who can make faith start growing for the first time in their hearts. So the disciples, they they didn't just add 3,000 people of believers that day. It's not just like a one-day thing that happened. You know what the disciples did after this? Because they knew how to speak these different languages? What do you think they did with that? Yeah, they they went and they used that ability to to go and share the good news of Jesus with even more people. The disciples didn't just stay in Jerusalem. They went all over the place. They became, many of them became missionaries and went off to different places to share the good news of Jesus with people who had not heard it before. So who knows what different languages they got to learn But the whole point was that they could share the good news of Jesus with as many people as possible because God wants all people to be saved. And the cool thing is that this wasn't just a special thing for the disciples. It's actually special for you and me too. 
Did you know that you could share Jesus with someone? Maybe with someone who hasn't heard it before. Maybe with someone who who already knows it but needs a little extra comfort from God's word today. Maybe someone who's feeling sad or down. You could remind them and tell them that God loves them. God sent his son Jesus to die for them. God cares about them. And every time that we get a chance to share Jesus with someone, share the good news of God with someone, the Holy Spirit works in their heart to help strengthen their, their faith. So that's something that you can do. No matter what age you are, right? You, you can do that and the Holy Spirit then works in people's hearts through the preaching and the sharing of God's word. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So today, what, what do we learn today? Not just that there was a cool sound of wind, not just that there were tongues of flame, not just that there were you know, like interesting languages, but God wants all people to be saved and God uses us to share that message with other people. So let's, let's pray about that. Can you fold your hands with me? Dear God, thank you for this amazing story of how you brought so many people to believe in you. Dear God, please also help us to be bold and confident in telling other people about Jesus, about your love, about your forgiveness, about your care and your protection and all the things that are good about you. And we pray that every time that we share that good news with someone else, that your Holy Spirit works powerfully in their heart to grow and to strengthen their faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go sing a song together. Let's sing Amigos de Cristo. Cristo, we're friends of the Lord. Amigos de Cristo, we're friends of the Lord. For we've been forgiven and we've been restored. Amigos de Cristo, we're friends. Let's go to God in prayer. Why don't we fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes, and think about Jesus. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to die for the sins of the whole world. Thank you for giving the disciples the ability to share that good news with people in lots of different languages. Dear God, we also pray that you would use us to share the good news of Jesus as our Savior with as many people as possible. And thank you for sending your Holy Spirit so that you could help grow our faith and the faith of other people so they, they can be drawn closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's go sing another song. let's close with the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Well, thank you for coming to chapel today. Thanks for singing along with me. Thanks for learning together with me. And just remember, God wants all people to be saved. And God uses his Holy Spirit to help grow people's faith. So, how can you and I help grow people's faith? By keeping on telling them about Jesus. Not just people that don't know about him yet, but even the people who do, right? Even our our parents, our, our grandparents, our brothers and sisters, we can help to grow their faith by reminding them about the awesome Savior that they have in Jesus. Reminding them, hey mom, you know Jesus loves you, right? Hey dad, you know Jesus died to take away your sins. That will help strengthen their faith because the Holy Spirit works in people's hearts whenever they get to hear the good news of God. So I hope that you can do that uh, maybe this weekend. Now, before we go, let's go sing happy birthday to the people who have birthdays this week. Happy Friday, everybody. And let's sing happy birthday to the people who have birthdays this week. Will you sing along with me? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kylie, Santiago, and Miss Melberg. Happy birthday to you. Have a great rest of your Friday and have an awesome weekend. I'll see you soon.